This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Health One. Uh, but I want to talk just a little bit about digital blocks. So, um, you know, a few different techniques for digital blocks. For me, I usually go, uh, let me see if I can rearrange this. I usually go um, dorsally uh, right along the proximal phalanx, kind of right at the MCP and do two or three cc's on either side. I think that's what most of you do. And then really to be complete, they say you should lay a wheel across the top. If you look at the um, nerves innervating the fingers, there are four nerves kind of in the, if we're looking at a clock face in the two o'clock, four o'clock, eight o'clock and 10 o'clock positions. So kind of all the way around, you have to make sure you hit all of those. But there is another technique that, that um, you guys are probably aware of where rather than two or even three injections, you can do a single injection right on the palmar surface, right at the MCP joint. So they say that you should go into the, um, the subcutaneous fat, which I don't know, like on my hands, there's not that much fat to get into. Or you can even go directly into the tendon sheath. So you can like palpate their finger and figure out where the tendon is and just stab that bad boy and go right into the sheath. Um, the idea then is that it just diffuses around to all of the nerves. So there was a recent study that I'll just talk about in the American Journal of Emergency Medicine 2020, uh, the difference between sub-Q digital nerve methods. So what they did is they took, it's always on medical students, right? So this was done in Korea. They had 87 volunteer medical students and they said, most of the time when we need a digital block, it's not something down here on the finger, it's something on the tip, right? So why should we have to go all the way down to the MCP joint? Why can't we go a little bit further? So they took these students, kind of divided them in half, and then had one person that did all of the injections, and they got randomized to either getting an MCP injection or a PIP injection a little bit further, and kind of same deal, they got two or three cc's of lidocaine, and then they did finger prick um, studies to see how well it went. So they both, they felt like it was equally painful no matter where they got injected. They rated it about a four out of 10. But um, the results were actually better when you look at the PIP, the more distal injection, rather than the MCP. It took two and a half minutes to get anesthetized when you did it at the PIP, and it took 3.8 minutes when you did it on the MCP, so it's quite a bit faster. And then what's even better was their anesthetic lasted longer. It tended to last about 11 minutes longer when they did it at the PIP joint rather than the MCP. So it's just something to remember. Um, you know, you'll, it's probably the same amount of pain. It's gonna work faster, it's gonna last longer if you do it at the PIP. And I will say those times that you've decided to do the other technique uh, and inject them on the dorsal surface, if it doesn't work the first time, that's usually my next move. Rather than just injecting a ton more at that same spot, I more move more distally down the finger and re-inject if you're gonna choose to re-inject at that point. So. Just a couple little tips and tricks. Cool, thank, thank you. All right, thanks. All right. We are on a quest to provide the world with free medical education. Please help us out by rating us on iTunes, following us on social media, and subscribing to our newsletter at emergencymedicalminute.com.